We are live on Facebook, and I'm down here at Staples Spotlight, and I want you to start asking your sleepy questions now. I also want to do a special shout out to the one, the only Matt Stewart. When I was first introduced to this gentleman over email, my photographer introduced me and said, you need to meet this gem of a human being. And I cannot agree more about Matt. So if you live in Kelowna, Canada, where I live, you need to come and meet this gentleman and check out Stable Spot Slide. I had no idea that I could be live streaming here as part of my Punch Pass membership. And Matt is actually here handling all the technology. So it's history in the making here for Pammy Sleep. And I'm so delighted that you're here to learn about newborn sleep. Now you'll notice that I have my phone in my hand. That is because I want to hear from you and hear your sleepy questions. But I understand with live streaming, there's a six second delay. So I want to do another shout out to an amazing individual that I've known for a very long time. And she just keeps stepping up, stepping up, stepping up more. And her name is Sarah Chillard, and she's part of my dream team, and she's based out of Vancouver. And so what she's going to be doing is taking your sleepy questions and feeding them to me over WhatsApp so we can get to the nitty gritty details on why you want to make sleep a priority for your newborn, but more importantly, how to get this tiny human of yours, whether they're still on board in your belly or live in your arms, how to get this tiny little baby to sleep well. So why would do you want to stay and listen to Pam? Well, number one, I have a sense of humor. So if you are looking for the sleep consultant that is kind of dry, you know, very particular, that kind of thing, well, you can just scroll on by. <laughs> I am going to maybe use some colorful language, heads up, because the reality is, is you already know this, There's a, it's been an extremely stressful time in history, and I was ready to jump off the bridge and take the baby with me in 2006, and there was nothing called a pandemic happening. So I applaud you for having babies in this era, and I am here to let you know, the first thing I want you to know, Mama and Papa, I want you to take a deep breath because if you are here for this newborn live session, it tells me that sleep is a priority for you and chances are if you're like the 2,696 families that we've helped one at a time, that you're kind of anxious about sleep and you want to set up your human being for a lifetime of success. So number one, I just want you to take a deep breath. Your baby is built to sleep. It really is. But we're going to get into how to get that baby to sleep. So I'm just going to check and see if there's a question already from the floor. Oh, there is. All right. Um, I see your first question. Oh, Sarah, I thought you said there was a question. It's in the inbox. Can you send it over to WhatsApp so that I can answer this person's question? Um, so one of the things you want to know about me, one, colorful language, stories, three, but the most important thing you want to know and why you want to stay here with me live on Facebook is I'm going to give you reputable and accurate advice. These are tried, true, proven tips and information working one family at a time since 2009 when I launched my business. Now, I'll be forever grateful to the person that got me started in this full-time career, but the training I received, honestly, was not enough. And so I'm carving out a very different path in this multi-million dollar, unregulated, unlicensed industry. So I'm really delighted that you're here with me today to not only have some fun learning about newborn sleep, but also to get what works for you and your tiny baby. So I want you to start asking your questions as soon as they come up. Don't be shy, any little question. If your baby is older than a newborn, well maybe you want a new 
ask newborn questions for baby number two, baby number three, or baby number four that's on board <laughs> or that you're thinking about having. If your baby is older and you want to ask your question today, absolutely. Even if you're a grandmother and you want to ask questions about your own sleep as a grandmother, I'd be delighted to answer them. So whatever question you have regarding sleep, I'd be delighted and honored to answer it. The first question we have is, can you sleep train while baby is sleeping in the same room as you? What a great start to the newborn session. The, as, the truth, sorry, 100%, yes, you can teach your newborn to sleep while they're in the room with you, or you can choose to teach your newborn to sleep in uh, their separate sleep environment. So when we work with families one at a time, we ask those families what's important to them. Do they want their baby? And so special ops, Ashley Cool, and I was chatting with her on the way over here. She has a very unique case. Anyways, she wanted her second baby right beside her bed for various reasons. And so she, this little darling Danny, who's now three and a half years old and an amazing sleeper, was right beside Special Ops. And you can get to know all my team on the website, by the way. She, she wanted Danny right beside her. And so Danny was right beside Ash so that she could respond to Danny whenever she needed. And she still set up these incredible healthy sleep habits that are still working three and a half years later in spite of really complicated medical issues that uh, took place after Danny was born. And Special Ops worked with another sleep consultant on my team by the name of Sophie. And Sophie guided Ashley and Rob to great sleep in spite of these extreme challenging situations that were going on. So if you've just tuned in, my name is Pam and I'm the proud founder of Pam Me Sleep, which was established in 2009 to rescue families just like you. So start asking your sleepy questions and I'd be delighted to answer them. I also want to encourage you to enter our contest. You could win one of my sought after newborn, infant, toddler or school age uh, sleep consultation packages with one of my highly trained PAMI sleep consultants. On top of that, you can win some uh, coveted iHeart Naps merchandise if you want. So enter today so that you can win. And if you want to support mental health and two amazing charities, the more you enter the contest and donate to those charities, the more chances to win. So I want to come back to this really great first question that was asked. Oh, well, there's a second question. When can I start sleep training? Whenever you're ready, mom and dad, <laughs> you can start sleep training. It's never too early to establish healthy sleep habits, nor is it ever too late. So yes, at Pamney Sleep, we work with newborns and that's why I'm here today. My daughter learned how to sleep as a newborn and really she was the greater reason and the catalyst for me to take the leap from a very safe, a very secure, well-paying gig to dedicate my life to helping others like you. Week by week by week, she learned this vital life skill and beautiful gift and by 10 weeks, she was sleeping 10 hours through the night, waking up once to breastfeed, and then going back down for another two to three hours, all on her own. During the day, she was napping brilliantly, easy peasy lemon squeezy, as my kids now say, and as a result of all that great sleep, she was the happiest baby on the planet, and I didn't go through the period of purple crying, if you've heard of that. I didn't go through the colic, if you've heard of that. I just had a delightful, happy, well-rested baby, and I got to witness all the wonderful miracles that a newborn does, which I did not experience with my first in my very anxiety-fueled sleep deprivation fog. So that's why I want to share this wisdom with you today. So if you decide to embark on sleep training with your newborn, the real benefit there is that there's no tears involved 
because you're instilling habits rather than changing them. So I want to come back to this really great question about can I have my baby in the room with me or can I have my baby independent of me? Most of the literature out there, most of the recommendations out there are that you should room share with your baby for the first six months. Now the landscape is always changing. Maternal mental health is also important. So what we like to do is say what works best for you and your family. Regardless of where your baby's sleeping, whether they're brand new, whether they're an infant, whether you have a toddler, whether you have a school age child, or whether it's you, the very first step, regardless, I have a five step system that's so easy to remember. The first step, oops, I forgot, Matt, I have to, see this is history in the making too. I can get kids sleeping like machines, but I'm not very good at technology, so that's why I'm so glad that I'm here with Matt. I've never used one of these things before, so bear with me, folks. I'm gonna do my best. So, I want you to imagine that your baby is eventually going to climb up a set of stairs, okay? And that's a beautiful skill that they're going to learn eventually. So the very first S that you need to remember, regardless of the age of your baby, or even if it's you, is you want to set up an optimal sleep space for you and your baby. So Ariana Huffington, if you've heard of her, she once crashed in a hotel room thanks to sleep deprivation, and now she is a sleep evangelist or a sleep enthusiast. She'll go into hotel rooms and she'll block out even little red lights, apparently, on the TVs or the radio equipment, whatever it might be in that hotel room. She actually apparently takes black tape with her and blocks out any bit of light so it doesn't impact her sleep. Now there's controversy or debate on when melatonin, which is our sleepy hormone, is released into our bodies when it starts with babies. One of my latest books that I'm reading I've read <laughs> is one of my heroes, Dr. Avi Sede. He says melatonin isn't released in, in the body until about six months. Why is it important to have a cave-like room and an optimal space like Ariana Huffington? Well, in the case of an older child, light does impact their sleep, just like it impacts yours. In the case of a brand newborn or an infant, what we wanna do is we wanna create no distractions for those babies so that they can sleep the best. Imagine being this brand new life have you ever taken your baby to, say, Home Depot or one of the big box stores and the fans are going? Oh my gosh, it's mesmerizing, right? Imagine being this tiny human being and you're brand new in the world. Anything is going to fascinate you and distract you from sleeping. So I want you to make it like a cave. Whether you're sharing that room with your baby or they're sleeping independent of you, I want you to set up an optimal sleep space. Now I went down to one of our local baby stores and I picked up a prop today and the lovely Matt who is here with me from Staples, he actually set up the crib for me. Like this guy, really, you've got to meet this man. He is so incredible. So when you purchase your crib, it's really important that you create a safe space for your crib, for your baby to sleep because yes, it is true. You know, there is research that supports SIDS, and um, you want to, in my humble opinion, you want to invest in an organic mattress. I wish I had known that in 2006, but if you'd like to know more about that, you can just ask your question below, and I'd be happy to answer that. Regardless, I want you to have a nice, firm mattress, nothing in the crib other than your baby. That's it. You want to get rid of all the clutter, nothing in there, just your baby. I'm going to see if my baby fits. Perfect, my baby does fit. Now, we're talking newborns today. I want you to invest in some swaddles. I actually love this one called the Grow Snug that was invented a few years ago and I gave it away on one of our other contests um, and it converts into a sleep sack eventually. Now. <clears throat> When you're using a swaddle, 
That is for a newborn to about three months of age. It is a, it's a wonderful uh, opportunity for your baby to get better sleep. Now, when you have your baby in this safe sleep environment, I, uh, by clutter, I mean everything. You don't want the mobile over the crib. Quite often we're recommending parents to move those things over to a change table because then the, the baby can avoid it. So nothing in the crib except your baby and make it like a cave, regardless of where they're sleeping, whether it's night or day, because one of the biggest myths out there and I even had a gynecologist that was you, hired me for their second baby. She's like, oh, I thought I was supposed to leave the baby in a light environment during the day so they understand the difference between day and night. No, that's a big fat myth, okay? So, and I even have a blog post about that. So if you want it, just comment below and we'll make sure that we get it to you. Now, yes, you want it dark, 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 re regardless of the age of your baby and whether it's night or day because they're going to get better sleep. I'm just going to check the WhatsApp here and see if there's a new question coming up through. Um, and if you're just tuning in, oh my gosh, I've got so much to share on newborns. I've been helping families since 2009. This is my full-time gig, my full-time career, my passion, whatever you might want to call it. And my name is Pam and I'm the proud founder of Pamney Sleep. Before I forget, I want you to enter the contest. We've got the link below. You could win one of my sought after sleep consultation packages from newborn up to school age. Plus you can support mental health by stuffing the ballot box um, in support of two charities. So don't delay, enter today. So, and start asking your questions. We got another one coming in. Do you use swaddles right away? What is the safest one? Yes, I love swaddles right from the get-go. Absolutely. Um, and the reason why I like swaddles, provided is um, why I like swaddles, sorry, I got tongue-tied there for a second, is something called a reflex. And it's called the Moro reflex. And it's What's really fascinating, when your baby is born, the medical community is checking to make sure a variety of reflexes are happening to make sure that your baby is neurologically sound. So it's a good thing that your baby startles. It's a good thing. You want them to startle. That means that it's good. But the problem is, is that when they startle, the startle awake. And so that's why swaddling is recommended. But you do want to do it properly because, yes, you don't want it tight around the hips because that can cause issues with your baby's development, okay? And you don't want your baby in the little babushka, you know, outfit 24-7. Oh, no, 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 that's not good. You want your baby in the swaddle just for sleep so that their brain and their body associates the swaddle just with sleep, okay? Make sense? Um, and that's really getting into, oh my goodness, <laughs> That's pretty funny looking how I've written space. The re what we're getting into next, the next S that you want to remember is the science of sleep, okay? So swaddling is a really great tool with the respect to science of sleep. I want you working with nature rather than against nature in all areas of sleep. So what else do I mean by that? Well, the swaddle is a really great tool for newborns, provided that you're um, uh, swaddling safely, protecting those hips. They're not in there all day long, all night long. Well, all night long for sure. Um, but you definitely want them out of the swaddle when they're not sleeping, okay? I can't stress that enough. Uh, so the other thing with science is in order to get optimal sleep night and day is the more your newborn sleeps, the more they sleep. So don't keep them awake too long. So we've got a lot of information on that. So if you want more, just let me know. There was a really great question here about um, what is the safest swaddle? Oh, you know what? I actually reached out to my Pamney's family group. 
So if you're on Facebook, which you are because you're here with me today, I've got this awesome private Facebook group. Originally, it was started for just clients who had completed their sleep training journey. I've now opened it up to non-clients so that non-clients can learn from clients. So as a matter of fact, I reached out this morning and I said, hey, team, fam, what are your favorite swaddling blankets? Like I mentioned earlier, I really like the Grow Snug because it be, it's a swaddle at first and then it turns into a wearable blanket, a sleep sack, which is what you want next. So I feel like it's a really good investment because it's gonna last you longer, right? So I love getting client feedback on what swaddles work for them. So we'll post some links. Uh, we'll come back to that question and we'll respond on the Facebook Live on what my clients told me. Years ago when I first got started in 2009, if you need, and if you're just tuning in, my name is Pam. I'm the proud founder of Pam Me Sleep. I want you to enter my contest. The link is below. And then I want you to start asking your sleepy questions. We're talking newborn sleep, but I'll talk about anything you want to talk to talk about today regarding your baby's sleep. When I first got started in 2009, I happened to be in one of the local baby stores and I got talking to this woman who not only was working at the store, but was also a doula. And a doula is a wonderful professional that supports families when they're preparing for birth, ha giving birth to their baby, and after birth. What I love about doulas, they're regulated, they're licensed, all of that kind of stuff, they're standards. And I hope that one day sleep consulting is the same as well. Well, I met this beautiful doula and she re recommended this particular swaddle. And I recommended it for years and got tremendous feedback from my clients, but it's not available anymore. I don't know why it's not available, but it's not around. So I love recommending swaddles that are recommended by my clients because they're the ones working with these tiny babies every single day. My children are now 14 and 12, and whenever I meet a new baby, oh my gosh, my ovaries hurt. So if you have a baby and you're with me today talking newborn sleep, know that I'm jealous. We got another question in. Is sleep training a newborn the same as a five month old? No, very different and I, what a great question. What we're getting into here is the last one, which is system, okay? So that I have this 5S method. Actually, it's a 5S system, okay? That's how you can remember it, okay? And the last step is system. <laughs> now, why am I not calling it the 5S method? Well, there's a really wonderful doctor by the name of Dr. Harvey Karp, and that's the name of his method, 5S method. Mine is very different than Dr. Harvey Karp. He coined the phrase, I believe he coined the phrase, the fourth trimester. And if you want to talk more about the fourth trimester and his theories, then we can certainly do that. I wanted to get back into this wonderful question of is sleep training the same with a newborn? versus a five month old? No, for so many reasons. <laughs> Number one, I'm wondering, Matt, I'm gonna try this out. I hope I can do two pages. Uh, I don't think, I, oh, he said not to do two pages. Okay, number one, we're gonna jump back a step and I want you to recognize regardless of the age, whether you are a brand new baby an infant, a toddler, a school age child, or even an adult, you've got to recognize that sleep is a skill. And I'm just checking the time. Okay, good. We're good? Oh, no, it's fine. I'm good. Matt just checked to see if I wanted to learn how to go up and down. That's okay. I'm just going to use the one whiteboard and keep it simple. Um, <coughs> but see, this is the thing about this guy. You really need to come to Stables and you gotta meet Matt Stewart. I've been shopping at Staples since I launched my business in 2009, but they just started this whole Staples Spotlight, I can't remember, a couple of years ago now, and it's phenomenal. It's my favorite co-working space in Kelowna. Not necessarily, because of the lighting and everything, but more importantly, because of this really incredible human, Matt Stewart, and you really need to meet this guy, or at least follow him on LinkedIn, um, Facebook, 
or uh, Instagram, and I'll post his, his handles so that you can connect with him. He's really amazing. So why is it different from a newborn to a five-month-old? Well, you need to recognize, regardless of the age, that sleep is a skill. And I remember when I was a brand new mom, ready to jump off the bridge and take the baby with me, I was like, what the F? How is sleep a skill? Like, if you don't sleep, you die. If you don't eat, you die. Why does my baby need to learn how? Well, it is, and that's why I wanted you to think of this as a staircase. And eventually, your baby is going to crawl up these stairs, and that's a skill. One day, they're going to be riding a bike. That's a skill. One day, they're going to be about to learn to drive, which is my son, and it's freaking me out. That's a skill. So sleep is this ability to go from A awake to B asleep all by oneself, OK? You want to think of sleep as a journey and as a skill, OK? And when you're instilling habits with a newborn, ah, it's so awesome. If you are scared of crying, then the best thing to do is teach your baby to sleep as a newborn because you're instilling habits rather than changing them. And then they get to learn this vitalized skill week by week by week by week by week. Now, the other thing with newborn sleep is that because you're instilling habits, it's not going to be an overnight success story. Okay, It's going to be a delayed gratification success story. You can't expect a two-week-old baby to sleep 10 to 12 hours uninterrupted. That is not realistic. Plus, it's not healthy for the baby's health, well-being, and development, nor the mom's milk supply if the mom is choosing to breastfeed. So the, the way to teach a newborn to sleep is starting um, before they're three months of age, obviously, and you're instilling habits, but you're putting them down. Yes, you're putting them down awake, and you're asking that newborn to take that journey into sleep all by themselves. And if they learn this beautiful skill as a newborn, then potentially your baby could be sleeping 10 hours by 10 weeks waking up once to breastfeed and going back down for another two to three hours and avoiding something called the four-month sleep regression. We have clients that have sailed right through, <laughs> easy peasy lemon squeezy, and just, you know, continued sleeping, learning to sleep as a newborn. And if you go into the event, actually, you'll see a testimonial from a doctor, Dr. Trish, who, hi who did our newborn method, my newborn method with baby number two, and if you scroll down in the event somewhere, you'll see her testimonial about how her second child learned this vital life skill as a newborn and how much she benefited. Now, it, when you're talking about a five-month-old baby, because you are asking your baby to say goodbye to various external strategies, that's where the sleep training looks very different. Right? And if you are rocking your baby to sleep, bouncing your baby to sleep, driving your baby to sleep, feeding your baby to sleep, standing on your head in order for your baby to sleep, and I know that sounds retarded. However, the stories that I've heard from the 2,696 families that we've helped one at a time will tell you that when you are a sleep deprived parent, with a tiny human that refuses to sleep in the crib, you will do anything to help them sleep. I was asked recently by a very successful entrepreneur, what's the number one mistake that parents make with their child's sleep? I say nothing. They're not making mistakes. They're doing everything right to help their baby to sleep. So I don't like to call these things props, bad habits, crutches, I like to call them temporary tools. So if you are using various external strategies to help your baby sleep, it's OK. As long as your baby is safe and you're safe, 
That's all that matters right now. And keep embracing those temporary tools until you find a system that makes sense to you that you can implement and say goodbye to those external strategies so your baby can learn this beautiful gift and vital life skill of being able to go from A awake to B asleep all by themselves. Why do I want you to take time to investigate that and figure out a system? Why? Well, imagine you. If I asked you to say goodbye to, I don't know, many adults like to spend time on Netflix, Mm, hands up. Or if I asked you to say goodbye to your gadget every night, if you like to be on Instagram or social media every night in your bed, and I asked you to say goodbye to those things that you like to do before bed, are you going to be happy with me? No. And you're going to communicate to me, Pam, I do not like these changes. And you might even pick up the phone and use some foul language, right? Well, our tiny babies are the same. When we ask them to say goodbye, to various tools and strategies that are helping them go into sleep, they're not gonna be happy about it. So I know that's a long answer to a short question, but that's why it's so different when you're teaching a newborn to sleep versus an older infant. With newborns, it's about instilling habits. With infants, you're changing habits. Now, with both age groups though, you can still employ space, you can still work with science, and you can still implement something called structure. So there's my five S's in a nutshell. You want to set up an optimal sleep environment. You want to work with nature rather than against it. You want to uh, set up some structure. Sure, I'm going to come back to that in a moment. You want to recognize that sleep is a skill. And that they, just like crawling, walking, riding a bike, whatever, they need to learn this vital life skill and beautiful gift. And then once you recognize all of this and you've got this all going, then you set up a system. Now you can do these three things and still use external strategies and temporary tools, as I like to call them, and you'll still get better sleep. And do I expect you to remember everything that I'm sharing with you today? Oh my gosh, no. And so when you enter the contest, you will see a link to these five tips, all available to you to watch and hear from me in video format on what you can do to create optimal sleep for your infant. Sound good? Sign up and enter the contest and support mental health at the same time. So why don't we talk about structure? Any questions? I'm just going to double check on WhatsApp and see if there's more questions here before I get into structure. Oh, here's a really great question that came up. Can you cuddle your newborn during the day for naps? Oh, I love this question. So the short answer is yes, 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 yes. As long as your baby is safe and you're safe, that's all that matters, okay? So yeah, there is a risk of holding your sleepy baby on your chest. There is a risk with that. But if you're well rested and you've got your baby in a safe spot and all that kind of stuff, oh my gosh, there is nothing better than skin to skin contact. There is nothing better than holding a sleeping baby until it becomes 24 seven, <laughs> which has happened to many of my clients over the years. And that's why they're caught coming and reaching out and asking for help with their three-month-old babies, four-month-old babies, five-month-old babies, six-month-old babies, right? So what I love showing parents in our newborn sleep consultations, and that's why I want you to enter to win one, is how you can instill healthy sleep habits at night with your newborn, but still hold your baby during the day, because there is nothing better, and I never want to deny it, a mom or a dad or a grandparent that opportunity. And I am going to take a moment and tell you a story because I love telling stories, is I got a call from my mom and she was in tears. And the reason why she was in tears is she had gotten one of these, you know, one of these books that said, never let your baby sleep on your chest. Never do a cuddle nap. Never let your baby sleep in a stroller. Never let your baby sleep in the car. Never, 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 never. The only place, according to this author, was that the baby could only sleep in the crib. 
And this mom was bound and determined to teach healthy sleep habits for, from the get-go. I can't remember exactly why she was so motivated, but she was desperate to get her baby to sleep. She was in tears on the phone with me because she still needed to hire me to get across the finish line. And she felt so guilty because she denied her, her husband, she denied those grandparents, she denied herself from holding that sleeping baby. And I'll never forget that, Mom, and it brings tears to my eyes. And I said, okay, Mom, when you have baby number two, you call me back and I will show you how you can get cuddle naps during the day and still instill healthy sleep habits in the crib or the bassin net. So the, that's the long answer. The short answer is yes, 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 yes. Do not deny yourself um, the joy or others the joy of holding your brand new baby in order to sleep, okay? Let's get back to the question. Um, how much sleep does my baby need? Oh, I love this question too. Oh my gosh. This is getting into the science of sleep, as a matter of fact, okay? So your baby needs a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and, and the reason why they need a lot is this is how they grow. They need those vital life calories from the breast to the bottle but they also need sleep. The growth hormone is actually released when we're sleeping, and so if you compromise sleep, you're going to compromise your baby's health, well-being, and development. Now, I say that, oh my gosh, my goal is to educate and empower, never guilt or shame a parent. I want you guys to know that I'm a very compassionate sleep consultant, and I was once there too with a sleepless baby, and I was overwhelmed, confused, and conflicted by the amount of information on, on there on the internet. And I just want you to know, I want you to take a deep breath and know that your baby is going to sleep. So how do you know how much sleep does you, your child need? Well, certainly if you go online, there's recommended amounts, um, total hours, right? How I like to gauge whether or not a baby is getting enough sleep, be it a newborn, an infant, a toddler, a school-aged child, even an adult. Well, adults are hard. I'll come back to that in a moment. But it's based on how their behavior is during the day. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Think about you for a moment. Before you had this baby, on board in your belly, perhaps you were getting really good sleep. And now you're getting interrupted sleep or broken sleep. You might be sleeping two to three hour chunks just like your newborn, but it's not the same as getting 10 to 12 hours uninterrupted for a baby, an infant, when they're age appropriate and developmentally ready to do so. And it's not the same for you, parent, if you're used to getting six to seven to eight hours of s optimal sleep every night. I think hands up, we all agree. Now with adults, why I said there's a little asterisk here, with adults, we do things to help us cope with the lack of sleep during the day so that we can stay productive. The number one drug in the world, which is completely unregulated, is caffeine, and we give it to our children liberally. I know, crazy. However, <laughs> that with a baby or a newborn, the best way to know if your child is getting enough sleep is whether they're happy. So in the ideal world, your baby wakes up happy, they go down for a nap happy, they wake up happy, they go down for a nap happy, they wake up happy, go down for a nap happy, wake back up happy. Okay, and yes, with newborns, in some of my sleep consultations that I've done when we're starting at the age of two weeks, then those kids are napping sometimes six or seven, maybe even eight times in a day. So how do you know when to put your baby down for a nap? Coming into the science again, I like to take away anxiety rather than add to the anxiety. What I love is these gadgets. You set a timer, 
and you say, okay, my baby has been awake for, recommend, for Pam's recommended amount, now it's time to put them down for a nap. What is my recommendations? Well, we've got this really handy dandy magnet. If you email get sleep at pamneesleep.com, I will personally put one in the mail. I will, I will, I will for sure. Or you, we can provide you lots of screenshots, a da downloadable item. But what you'll see is that if you have a newborn, it might be 45 minutes of awake time before that baby goes down for the next nap because in the science of sleep, the more your baby sleeps, the more they sleep. It's not logical, but it's biological. Now having said that, if your baby is only sleeping and not eating, playing, pooping, oh gosh, and extremely lethargic, I want you resting to your medical professional and, get, and checking that out, because no, that is not normal. And touch wood, in all the 11 years, now starting my 12th so of full-time sleep consulting, I have never seen that. But I love putting that out there. So if you just tuned in, we've got 13 minutes to go, to go to answer your sleepy questions. My name is Pam, and I'm the proud founder of Pam Nee Sleep, which was established in 2009. And today we're talking newborns. Now, before I forget, I want you to enter today's contest. We're giving away $3,500 worth of prizes, including coveted iHeart Naps merchandise, such as this, or perhaps that sleep sack. Our sweaters are extremely popular. Or even better, you can win sleep. My sought after newborn, infant, toddler, preschooler, or school age child packages are all available for you to win. And the more you enter by donating to two charities, the more chances you get to win. All right, let's get back to some questions here. Does newborn sleep training transition into old baby, older baby sleep training, such as dropping night feeds when appropriate? Okay, I'm sorry, mom or dad. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that one more time. Does newborn sleep training transition into older baby sleep training, such as dropping night feeds when appropriate? Oh, yes, 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 yes. So when we work with clients or when you decide to do newborn sleep training, if you try, decide to do it on your own, what you can expect is that week by week by week by week by week, the stretch of sleep typically gets longer. So what I find with our clients is that typically if a baby is three to four hours, sorry, three to four weeks, and this is based on adjusted or actual age, we always work on adjusted age with preemies. So if a baby is three to four weeks old, then the best you can expect is typically a three to four hour stretch. Sometimes we get a two hour stretch, sometimes we get a five hour stretch. And then week by week by week, this stretch of sleep gets longer and longer and it usually matches the child's age. So by, this is where I'm getting to the 10 by 10 weeks, 10 hours. Now I've had clients where I've had 10 week old babies and they're sleeping 12 hours through the night on their own. Now those are typically the bigger babies. <laughs> and we're still feeding on demand with my newborn approach, okay? So what I mean by that, when the baby is three to four weeks old, yes, when the mom or the dad hears that baby cry, we hit a little bit of a pause, we go to the bathroom, wash our hands, and then we go and respond to that baby if they're still crying. You might be wondering, why are you recommending going to the bathroom and washing their hands? Well, babies like to talk in their sleep. <laughs> yeah. And so that cry might not necessarily be, hey, I'm hungry, come and feed me. It might be talking. And so I've had so many parents report to me that they heard that cry, they went to the bathroom first, washed their hands, and by the time they were ready to respond to their baby, they were back to sleep. How cool is that? So we're still feeding in the night with the newborn approach, and then you're still feeding on demand. So when the baby wakes up, you hit a pause, and then you go to the bathroom, you come back, and you feed them if they're still awake. Okay, make sense? 
I hope so. So yes, with my newborn approach, that's how it typically lays out. Now, sometimes what's happened with our clients is that, so typically what happens is the first stretch of sleep lengthens and then it's two to three hours, two to three hours, two to three hours after, after that throughout the night. We've had some clients where the first stretch of sleep is short, two to three hours, but then the second stretch lengthens. And then we've had some clients where it just, it's, it's divided up in half, where let's say it's a 10 week old baby and they started my newborn approach, they'll have a, ba we'll have a baby that sleeps five hours, wake up to feed, and then sleep another five hours. Okay, so I hope that's making sense to you. What I've found in all the years of helping one family at a time with newborns, typically, most likely, is the first stretch of sleep gets longer, then they wake up, have a feeding session, and go back to sleep on their own. Now, in all the years that I've been consulting, um, do you think there's been a lot of newborn clients, even with my repeat clients? <laughs> well, no, huh, right? So I decided to do the newborn approach with my second. And I, like I said earlier, if you've been with me right from the beginning, she was the greater reason why I left a very sa safe, secure, well-paying, I'm talking well-paying gig, to, to dedicate my life to helping others. Well, I've had many a client who said, you know, and we have a midwife who's a great example. Baby number one, she was fraught with anxiety. She was so nervous about everything and her baby wasn't sleeping well. She embarked on sleep training with my company and she was really nervous about hearing her daughter cry because we were changing habits rather than instilling them. Fast forward a few years later, she gets pregnant and she says to me, you know what I wanna do with my second? I wanna nurse him to sleep and I wanna bed share with him safely and I know I wanna hold him all day long and I don't wanna do your newborn approach and I'm like, no problem, mama. I said, but you remember like a few years ago, you didn't want to hear your baby cry. That was really, you know, anxiety producing for you when we were changing her habits. And she's like, oh no, I'm fine now. It's been two and a half years or so and she sleeps like a machine. And so I'm okay, I'm okay. I know that my little guy is gonna cry eventually, but I'm okay with that because I know that you're gonna make it as gentle and as easy as possible on me and my baby. So we've had parents, even like special ops. Again, if you've been here right from the beginning, special ops is an amazing member of my team. She does special projects, that's why we call her that. Well, with her second, she experienced some really complicated issues with her daughter even something, a, a really rare form of breathing disorder called laryngomalacia, and you can look that up. Anyway, she had some really rare, some really interesting, challenging things that came up with Danny. She still proceeded with many elements of my newborn sleep method working with Sophie, but she put some of it on pause. So mom with this great question about does newborn tra sleep training transition to older sleep baby sleep training. Well, we've had some clients that have followed through with my whole newborn approach and their kids are now six or seven, eight, nine years old and still sleeping my, like machines. I've had other clients where they've started on my newborn approach and they've hit pause. They've still kept up with having an optimal space environment. They've still kept up with having, working with nature rather than against nature. They still kept up with my loving routines for sleep. We didn't get really into structure, but structure is all about creating loving routines for your baby before you put them down to bed and before you put them down for nap. I'm not talking about rigid sleep schedules here, not at all. So when you enter my contest, you'll get my videos that explain this in detail. Okay, so we've had parents like Special Ops where they've employed many elements of my newborn approach hit pause on it, and because of hitting pause, they've gone back to maybe using some of the temporary tools, some external strategies. But they all say that it made it easier come transition time when they came back to do my infant method. And my infant method, if you wanna know more about my infant method, I'm gonna be talking about that tomorrow on Facebook Live. It's all about infant sleep training, but with the infant method, 
you are changing habits. And so these clients that have done the newborn approach and then had to do some tweaking, as we like to call it, those kids do experience a little bit of crime when we tweak it. But even today when I was chatting with special ops on the way over because I wanted to confirm some details of her story, she said it went way easier than she ever would have anticipated when Danny was three months old and they had to tweak a few things and change things up. Okay, another great question is, I do not want to hear my baby cry. Is there a more gentle way? Yeah, newborn sleep training. You know, instilling habits rather than changing. That is the best way to teach your baby to sleep. The other option to avoid crying whatsoever, and I really don't want you to do this, is you can wait until your child is between the age three and four. Now, when I talk to parents, and they have three and four year olds, they disagree with me, but you can reason, negotiate, and motivate that age group, and therefore lessen the crying and lessen the temper tantrums. We even had a surgeon who said, Pam, there's no way, there's no way you can reason, negotiate, or motivate my child. He uses the crib as a trampoline. Her son was three years old, or I, actually I think he was about two and a half. I'd have to check the details. But she was calling for her two and a half year old son, as well as her brand new baby. And then she's like, there's no way you're gonna be able to reason, negotiate, and motivate him to sleep. We've tried everything, well, she was right, he was a tougher than average cage, case, but we got there and he loves sleep now, thanks to us. So, you got two options if you wanna avoid crying. You either teach your baby to sleep as a newborn because you're instilling habits, or you wait until they're age three or four. I don't want you to wait till they're age three or four because that's a lot of lost sleep that's gonna impact them and it's gonna impact your entire family unit. So please don't choose that option um, and just, you know, find a system that you feel comfortable implementing, knowing that your baby is going to cry. They are. I used to try to sugarcoat this. I used to try to hide away from it. I used to try to shy away from it. But now, 12 years later, I'm starting my 12th year. This is the only thing I do in life. It's not a side hustle. And if you're just tuning in, we still have two more minutes for questions if you want to ask them. And I don't shy away from it. Your baby, unfortunately, if they're three months and up and you're changing habits, they're going to cry because they're going to be mad, angry, and confused about the changes that you're making with their sleep. Okay. Uh, another great question. Cuddle naps probably won't take in a dark environment or really quiet if you have any other kids. Is that okay? <gasps> oh, mama, papa, whoever that is that asked that great question. You are so correct. Thanks for clarifying that. I don't want you in a cave-like room 24-7 trying to get your kid to sleep. For the cuddle naps, yes, I want you to be out on the couch. There was one mom, oh my gosh, she loved it. She would sit down every afternoon while her older baby that she had hired me for, which was now a toddler, had her nap. And in the afternoon, while her toddler was having a nap, she would sit down on the couch, have her cuddle nap, and watch her favorite TV show while her husband was at work. And she just binged for two to three hours and watched her favorite show while this beautiful little tiny human slept on her chest. And yes, her toddler was sleeping two to three hours. It was crazy, and she loved life the second time around. So no, for those cuddle naps, please don't be in a cave-like dark room. That's not healthy for you as a parent, okay? Because it's really important to teach these tiny humans to sleep, but it's also really important to look after ourselves as well, okay? So, great clarif clarifying question. Okay, it's one o'clock. We're gonna wrap up. I'm gonna let Matt get back to work. I hope you join me again tomorrow where we talk about infant sleep training we're going to dive deep into three months to 18 months age. So if you've enjoyed today's uh, session, I want you to comment below and let me know. If you haven't enjoyed today's session, I want to know that too. I say this with every single client. I want to know the good, 
the bad, the ugly, so you can, if you don't want to do it publicly, you can send me an email to getsleep at pamneesleep.com because I want to make your experience as a parent, whether you're hiring me for your baby or your toddler or your school-age children or just tuning in to one of these free inf information sessions, I want to make it the very best experience possible for you viewer because I really value your time and your, the, the opportunity to chat with you today. So I want to know the good, the bad, the ugly, and I really do hope that you enter today's contest and support mental health by donating to those two charities. Thanks so much for joining us, and bye for now. All right, Matt, we're done. Cut the cord, whatever that's called. Okay. Hey.